am eternally judge. Because he has authority, you agree with that, right? Sure, yeah. So, because of that, um, I don't make that claim. I'm just talking about temporal things. I, I judge people's language. I judge their, uh, you know, the way they dress, maybe, earrings, hair. And the reason why I judge those things is to warn them about God's judgment to come. That's the issue. God's judgment to come is the, is the problem that most people won't face. That's why we need to face it, because if the Bible is true, you, you believe the Bible is true, right? Um, I mean, I believe what's said in the Bible is true, and I believe that you have to, you have to, like, interpret it. It's not like, you don't follow, like, everything, like, you know, some of the laws, like, don't eat fish, or... Well, sure, I agree with proper interpretation. How do you get that, though? I think it varies from person to person, and that's how, that's, like, what faith is. Faith is not a thing that is the same for everyone. Well, I faith agree we have to have faith. I, absolutely, Jesus said, without faith, no man can please God. But the Bible also says that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things, First John says. So he's our teacher. He's our guide. And, and of course, in the church, there'll be teachers. There'll be Christian elders and teachers, people that have a lot more experience than we do. And we'll, we'll ask them to help us understand the inter proper interpretations of things. But you have to realize that, that interpretation, proper interpretation is very important. Because otherwise, you can be a homosexual Christian, right? That's not true. So what is? And the police are right over there. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm the one that books the area. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's for it's for safety on both parties because people feel like I guess attacked because you know they've they've been condemned, and I also think that they're trying to protect your free speech, which is a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Well. I think we have a different understanding of the Bible, but... Yep. Uh, you need to get the Holy Spirit for your teacher. Hmm? You need to have the Holy Spirit for your teacher. I think I have it. Before, you said it was just your opinion, individual opinion. I straightened that out by telling you the Holy well, Spirit I'm, I'm not saying that it's is the one that opinion. teaches us all faith things. faith is an individual experience. Say again now? I'm not saying that faith is like an opinion. I'm saying it's an individual experience. Like everyone's faith is no, different. No, I, I agree with that. You just dodged it again. But then you said everyone's opinion according to the way they understand it. After you said that part, you went on to say, well, I think everybody can have their own opinion, their own understanding. They can, but what makes it right? The only thing that would make it right is somebody who oversees it above us. That's the Holy Spirit oversees all Christians. And he would give us the proper interpretation of a particular passage in context. Okay. Well, then how can either of us know that what we know is right? I just told you, the Holy Spirit. I walk according to the Holy Spirit. I expect you as a professing Christian to walk according to the Holy Spirit. The thing is, I think I do too. Well, the Bible says about itself is of no private interpretation. No private, so the Catholic priest can't interpret it. My professor can't interpret it privately and then tell me what the secret interpretation is. But that we would have just open discussion, public interpretation. Why do you think that means that? You know, I gave you uh, James chapter 4, verse 1. Well, I think we're, we're doing that right now. Right. I agree. That is what we're doing right now, and that's good. Nothing wrong with that. But if I might go back to James chapter 4, verse 1, it says, What friendship do we have with the world? What does that mean to you? Well, we're in the world, but we're not supposed to be of it. That's a good interpretation, because that's another Bible verse I can refer to, right? So that gives me a sound hermeneutic. So you're on the right track there. I think part of being in the world is understanding how to make man. Sure. Because we are men. I agree with that. And how can we, how can we teach people the Holy Spirit in, like, this fashion? Uh, because, the, as I explained to you numerous times already, and you've been rejecting every time, I suppose, the Bible says, how will they hear without a preacher? So there's the preacher doing his job over there that none of you Christians on campus will do. The Bible says, Isaiah 58, 1, cry aloud, spare not that my people turn from their sin. So it says, yell about the Bible, about Jesus, about the gospel, so that people could turn from their sins. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't proclaim the, the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> right. What I'm saying is that I think it might be more effective and people might be more apt to listen if instead of like screaming it, it would be easier if like we could invite them to like church Well I, I might be more apt to listen to your counsel if you would actually do this work. Well, like, so I however you do I mean you could go right over there and, and preach I do is there. I invite people to church. 
Well, where does the Bible say to do that? Well, we're supposed to spread the word. We're supposed to spread the word of God, right? How is inviting a person to your building, your organization, inviting them to the church? Well, they they come in and they hear the word of God. Okay. Uh, in, why don't you just give them the word of God? It's in a setting that's like comfortable, is what I'm saying. How many? What percentage of people do you think actually accept your invitations? What? May ten percent? Twenty? Okay, not very many. Okay, twenty percent. So the other eighty percent, you're losing out on them. So how do you get them? Well, I could ask the same thing with this. How many? Well, that's that's how we get them, right there. Where, where the Lord is lifted up, He will draw them into Himself. So we lift up the Lord Christ and what He did for them on the cross. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 that it's foolishness to those that are perishing. The preaching of the cross is foolish to those that are perishing. So, so we preach the cross and Him crucified for the remission of sin. The sinner said, oh, that's stupid. I don't believe that. And that's their choice. They can make that choice if they want. But the problem with that is, of course, we've done our job. And God has chosen foolish things to confound the wise. All the wisdom of this university is confounded by open-air preaching. Every bit of it. Whether it's it's educational, whether it's medical, whether it's historical, archaeological, geological, all that wisdom that you people pay for here, we're willing to give you from the Bible for free. Why? Because we love you. We don't want you to go to hell. And the devil, devils, excuse me, want to fool so many people. Do you want to give this to someone else? The multitudes. No, I, I want you to read it. There's a website on there you can contact me through if you've got more questions. Okay? Is that so, fair? No. Yeah. I still don't my, know your name, but hey, my, my name's John. My final thing is, um, I just think that you might have a higher chance of letting people know God if you do it privately. That's carnal thinking. The Bible says do it publicly. He died publicly, ashamed, and naked. Why would I privately try to hide the truth? When this guy here might repent at, the, at our conversation. He might, right? He might actually think about hearing our conversation. He might think about it get get saved later on. So why wouldn't I do it publicly? And the answer is, I would do it publicly. I should do it publicly. That's all there is to it. All right. Well, I hope you have a great time. I hope it doesn't yep. get violent. I hope not either, but certainly it won't be us getting violent. We would never get violent with sinners. Hey, how you doing? Did you get one? All right. How y'all doing? Did you get one? Hey, friend. Good. Hey, friend. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Are you guys Christians? You guys Christians? Yes. Yeah. Can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. My name's John. How are you? No. I know. Noah was a preacher of righteousness for 120 years. Cassie. Cassie, hi. AJ. AJ, nice to meet you. Yeah, one for you. It has a website on it. It's all Bible verses. Uh, so, uh, you have questions about this method, maybe, or? What do you think? About this method? Yeah. The like, so open air preaching. Many times Christians will, nine out of ten times, people will object to it. So, what do you say? I think there's probably better ways. Yeah, I think there's better, better ways. ways. Okay, that's what the last guy said. Okay. What ways would you do? Maybe hand out water or feed the poor? Or? Preaching, I think, is like, open preaching is fine. Preaching is good. Okay, yeah, good. Well, that's a good start. To people, like, yeah, people like, okay, so like preaching is talking to people. Oh, so conversational preaching. That's kind of like what we're doing here. If you, if you were unbelievers or if I was an unbeliever, this would be conversational preaching. How often do you do that, Adam? Or, I'm sorry, Noah, right? Noah, yeah. Yeah, Noah. How often do I do that? How often do you do conversational preaching with a lost sinner? Well, I mean, try to build uh, regularly. Good. What do you tell them, Cassidy? What do you What do you tell them when you talk to them about the Lord? I'm just curious. Okay. Um, I tell them the four points of the gospel. Four points. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So first, God created you to okay. know Him. Okay. Loves you. That's a point. Good. Point two, you're sinful and you're separated from God. Full of sin, separated. That's a good point. Okay. Point three, Jesus came so that you could know the Lord. Like Jesus came and died on the cross. Amen. Good. Good. So that you could have a relationship with Him. Right. And our hope is in Jesus and His grace. That's right. And point four is that you have to make a decision for Christ. You have to accept His gift in order to have a That's that, those are all good points. I, I wouldn't say they're the only points of the gospel. Let me, if I might add another point that you might add to your repertoire. Okay. Uh, point five is that we should fear God. And uh, it's part of the everlasting gospel. Revelation 14 says, in the latter days there will be an angel going forth in the heavens preaching the everlasting gospel. Fear God 
and worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the springs of water. So here's a Bible verse that's talking about the everlasting gospel, a gospel from the beginning to the end, Alpha to the Omega. And in that gospel, it says to fear God. So we, sh we should add that to our, to our repertoire, amen? When you, when, you, when you talk to sinners, you should say, hey, man, you need to fear God because it's the beginning of wisdom. He says, well, why do I need to fear him? I thought he was loving. Well, he is love, but he's not just love, right, Cassidy? You were going to say something. I'm sorry. Um, all right. Um, so for, for Christians, for people who have already accepted this, like, so do... I, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. I don't think accepting Christ is, is, is biblical. I don't think you find it in the Bible. In chapter 10 of Acts, it talks about God finding us accepted, but... But there's no no Bible verse anyway that says, oh, I accept Jesus and now I'm converted. The Bible says to have a contrite spirit, a regretful spirit. God saves, Psalm 34, God saves such to be of a, a regretful, contrite spirit. We have to have a brokenness in our heart. We have to be humble. If we're proud, God will not save us if we're proud. We're so full of pride, we won't accept what he said. I agree we have to accept what he said, but accepting him, I'd rather say it this way, surrender to him. I think that's more appropriate. He's a king, right? He's the king of kings. We should just surrender to him, all, all of us. You agree with all those points? So now, you can't judge the preacher. I'll just, just give you this tip. You, you can't judge the preacher the way a sinner reacts to the preaching. Okay? Because a sinner, sometimes they're full of devils. And they'll do anything and everything to shut down that preacher. How will they hear without a preacher? Now, you guys say preaching should be conversational like this, but I disagree. It is one method, but the primary method, when Jesus said, go and caruso the gospel, it is a loud proclaiming. Uh, Isaiah 58, 1 says, lift up your voice like a trumpet, cry aloud, spare not that my people turn from their sin. Okay, so... If that building over there was on fire and people were in it, I should throw rocks at the windows, I should pull the fire alarm, I should yell at people, right? It's an emergency. Every sinner around you, Cassidy, is in a spiritual emergency. It's a 911 deal. And most of the people over there that are drawn to the preaching of the cross are in spiritual death. They've already died because they've already sinned against God, and so spiritually they're dead. Now they're uh, kind of on death row waiting for physical death. And if spiritual death meets with physical death, they get eternal death, eternal damnation, right? We believe that. So they need newness of life. They need, they need the light of Christ to shed on their hearts and minds. The Bible says a godly woman, see, she might say she's a Christian, but the Bible says a godly woman's quiet and meek. So you've been that. I appreciate that. But, but she's not being that. I mean, just we have to be honest with ourselves. If she would examine herself, she'd admit, yeah, that wasn't very meek or quiet or as a, as a godly woman should be. Well, the same godless person would turn around and say, well, you're yelling at me. I can yell back. Well, you can, but the question is, should you? And, and the yelling is to attract the attention to draw the people to the truth of Jesus, right? That's all it's for. And so, like I was saying before, Cassie, there's, this is the primary method, Caruso. And there's a secondary, Euclesio, I think it's uh, in the Greek, and that's what we're doing right now. Either one-to-one, -one, small groups, but it is a secondary method. The primary method is right there. And here's why. I mean, just in a natural sense, I'll share with you, if you don't mind, a natural sense is that we'll talk to hundreds of people today through preaching. If I stand here and have one-to-one -one conversations like this with people, which I can do, uh, for the rest of the day, we're here till 4 or 5 o'clock, for the rest of the day, then I'll maybe talk to 15 people at the most. There'll be good conversations, there'll be quiet conversations, that kind of thing. But, but these guys are getting what they don't want. They're being drawn like, kind of like moss to the light, you know, moss to the, the bug zapper. They want the light, but they don't want the light. They, they, they want the light, but they don't want the conditions that Jesus has put upon having a relationship with them. God requires holiness in the inward parts. And so he, when he says, come and surrender to me, he wants all of our heart, mind, strength, and soul. You agree with that, I'm sure, right? 
So. Do you have a high success rate with this? Do you see a lot of people? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Now, so I know you raised your eyebrows. What about all, are gonna come to that all they're hearing is this yelling? That you're not getting to talk to these people, and now they're just confused. Well, I'm not when trying to upset you, AJ, okay? People. So so let me explain if I might, okay? Uh, I saw your eyebrows go up. That, that's good. Uh, I, I like that. Ask the question again. One more time. Out of these people in, this com in, in that crowd, right. how many of them do you come to, do you see come to know the Lord? Okay, so I, I misheard what How you said. How many of them get saved? 100% uh, we've done our job with. Ezekiel 3, you, know, you have your Bible with you? Or? Yeah, I do. If you turn to Ezekiel 3, it talks about a watchman that warns. Okay, if you warn the wicked, his blood's not on your hands. If you fail to warn the wicked, his blood I will require at your hand. So on Judgment Day, none of these sinners will be able to say, Jesse, you didn't warn me. You warned me. You warned me of, of God's wrath to come. You warned me that God was angry with the wicked every day. So on Judgment Day, every sinner we have ever warned, 100% of them will have been warned. Will all of them come? No, think of the sower and the seed, okay? And the sower and the seed, only 25% of them come, right? Because some have rocky hearts, and the, and the birds of the air, the devils took it away. Some were choked out by the cares of the world, right? Some had shallow roots, but some fell on fertile ground. So we cast forth the gospel seed to them. I only expect 25% of them in their lifetime. Now this is just kind of an averaging thing, right? Mathematically. He's God's logical. He's mathematical. So if, if that 25% is true, then as I cast the gospel seed properly to them and tell them God requires holiness, contrition, all that stuff, then in their lifetime, 25% will be saved. 25% today? No, here, I reject that idea because... Here's why. Jesus said, does a grain of corn bring forth a harvest the day you plant it? It doesn't. I mean, we plant some water. God grants the increase. They grow up. They produce their own corn, their own seed. They're supposed to go out and spread that seed too. But unfortunately, many people become Christians. And you know, I, the, 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 the statistics are shocking, Cassidy. It's like eight or nine out of ten Christians don't share their faith to the grave. To the grave. Now, they're professing Christians. I don't know that they're Christians, but they're professing Christ anyway. And that's shameful that we would be ashamed of Jesus and his doctrines and what he taught and ashamed to spread his gospel just the way he said to do it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18 says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. The, the, the Caruso, the, the public yelling. So we, we yell in love. Our heart is still love, even though it may not sound like it to them or to you. And it's effectual. Like I said, it, it, it's good. God's word is not going to return void. It's going into their hearts. It's going into their minds. Things they've never been told by their pastors, by their parents. What? It's in the Bible. It's right there. You deny it, not me. I agree with God's word. Hallelujah. I agree with it. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, that we should obey our Creator, that we should surrender, all those ideas, right? Those ideas are important because if we don't get these biblical ideas into our hearts and minds, then what happens is people live a wrong way in front of God and claim to be Christians, and that's blasphemy. It's like saying, uh, you have your mother and father still? Yeah. So your last name is based on their name? And say you were to bring a shame to their name. You did something horrible that, that brought a, a rebuke to their, their good reputation, right? That's the same thing as a person that says they're a Christian, but they're living like a heathen. They're bringing a reproach to the name of Christ, to the, to the gospel, by their wicked works. Jesus said, you know, a good, tree, a good tree has good fruit. A bad tree has bad fruit. So do good trees have bad fruit? They shouldn't. Impossible. If you have the Holy Ghost, Cassidy, and I believe you do, if you have the Holy Ghost, you won't bring forth evil fruit. You bring forth good fruit, patience, kindness, meekness, gentleness, self-control, all these things. I know you want to say, oh, that preacher doesn't have any self-control. Well, I don't see gentleness in this. Well, what do you mean by that word, though? What do you mean by gentleness? I don't think that it's... Was Jesus gentle in the temple when he whipped people three times? Yeah, but Jesus was God. Well, okay, I agree with that. 
Uh, no, I agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, but in First uh, John up to two verse six, the Bible says that that we ought to walk just as He walked. Jesus is God, and Jesus said to walk, follow me, walk like I walk, then that's not going to fly. What you just said is not going to fly with God on Judgment Day. It doesn't make sense Jesus logically. Also, like, died for all of these people. So, like, well, that, that's their condemnation, though. If they don't come, that's not my fault. I'm trying to get them to understand the seriousness, seriousness and urgency of the matter. That's what I'm trying to get everybody, even the Christians, to understand. This is urgent. You walk among the lost on this campus, and I would suppose eight or nine out of ten people on this campus are not saved, even though 20 or 30 percent of them are claiming Christ blasphemy, which is what I was just talking about. So they blaspheme the name of God by claiming it, but they're not living according to the gospel. What should, Hebrews 2, 3 says, what shall become of them that obey not the gospel? So obedience is required of the Christian, is it not? So see, we're in agreement. Because we're in agreement doesn't make it right, though, does it? But we have Bible verses to back up what we're saying. They're acting the way they act because they disagree with what God taught in the Bible. Why? Now, they're, they're acting that way because they're lost. <laughs> they don't. You can't expect lost people to act like they're. You know, well, you're you're, you're saying everybody over there is lost. I don't know that. Well, That's I, not I what I'm that. saying. Right. So, so I'm glad you're being uh, forthright about that. I don't know that they're all lost, but they're certainly disagreeing with what the preacher's saying from the Bible. Now, it could be an interpretation problem. I get that. But the Holy Spirit's given to teach us all things, right? So we should be able to come to conclusion and agreement. We should be able to. And this is a working out of our salvation as well, right? For all, all of us. So if you, you, you're called to test the spirits, to judge righteously, so am I. Yeah, so on this campus, for example, they teach all kinds of worldly, carnal, wicked things that are against God. Their psychology, all their sciences, their archaeology, their history, all that's dead set against the histories in the Bible. Dead set against God as the author and finisher of our faith. So, you know what, sir? So, after all that I've told Noah, all the Bible verses I gave him about why this is the primary method, he still just taught him it's not the primary method. He still just said uh, this but, is a better way to do hey, it. We're right? gonna we're gonna disagree on this. But why are we gonna disagree, is, Noah? Because that's not right, man. That's listen. What what is unright it, about it, Noah? Right. Okay. What so. I'm saying, you're, you're preaching the gospel, and that's awesome, and I applaud you for that. No, you don't. You, you believe, actually just condemned him. I believe personally, unrighteously, unrighteously. I believe personally. That Noah the best was a preacher way, of righteousness. The best way. Noah was a proclaimer of righteousness to the whole world. I've already explained how that's inefficient. I've already explained how it's inefficient. It's a secondary, tertiary method. I'd love to shake your hand. Why? Great talking to you. Why? I'm going to head out because, one, I'm hungry. Two, I have tons of work to do. Well, deny your flesh, man. This is more important. All right. I love you. I'll see you later, baby. I'm going to go get lunch, too. Thanks for the... Yeah, you shouldn't be touching each other, either. The Bible says it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Noah, shame on you. Shame on Noah. He's going he's to end that all that with a kiss for his girlfriend, Cassidy. Shame, shame on him because the Bible says, as I just preached to him, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. And the wedding bed un, undefiled. So they're tempting each other and testing each other. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. And it looks like Jesse's drawing a small crowd here. Bring all of our gear up. Get closer so we can hear him preach better. All the naysayers and gainsayers. I don't need you, and I'm a Catholic, sir. You don't even know what the is for. You don't even know what the is for. Some of you think it's okay. It's not okay to be gay. It's not okay to be perverted. Not in your DNA. Is to be converted. Yeah, this will be great because it's going to be hot today, about 75. 
And we got the shade. Hallelujah. Praise God.
final lie. Uh, see, I was a street fighter. And I was, I, as a freshman, as a freshman, I would fight with the seniors. And there was a list of people I wanted to kill. I didn't make any definite plans, but I just wanted them dead. I wanted them dead. When I stopped listening to gangster rap, I took the thoughts of Tupac out of my mind. I filled my mind with the thoughts of Jesus. Because I started to read the sermons of Jesus. And then I developed a benevolent mind. So when I was 16 years old, I financed a mission trip to an orphanage in Acapulco. Mexico. Uh, despite all the drug cartels and the dangers of Mexico, I, flew, I brought all these supplies to an orphanage. I sponsored it. I financed it $2,000. That was the power of Jesus. That was the power of the gospel in my life. The power of the gospel in my mind. People like Richard Dawkins, that atheist idiot. Richard Dawkins says that Christianity is evil, that Christianity is a, a plague in society. We build the hospitals, we build the orphanages. It was Christianity that changed my homicidal life. Yes, ma'am. Why did you do because you wanted self gratification? I did it out of pure benevolence. I just, I just didn't want to sin anymore. I saw that sin was hurting me, sin was hurting God, sin was hurting my mama, and I just didn't want to sin anymore. Well, I, I choose not to sin. Yeah, you, yeah, it's true. You guys should be like, hey, Jesse, let's go pump this blood. I'll say no. So, but I, I can't change your free will. I mean, I'm not going to change your free will. None of us want that. God won't do that. Why, why do we think we can do that? I want you to freely choose to surrender to him, freely choose to love and obey him. Oh, no. They don't want to go to church because they love their sin. Right. 
there. That drum get and, high, get away. And they went to church. They were raised in church. They loved going well, to church. Why did you get drunk? Um, someone Pass attacked them outside of church. And choke them. They said someone attacked them. Yeah. Well, everybody will deal with their own sins at the judgment of Christ. So if a Christian did that, then shame on them. They have more judgment. But, but on judgment day, they won't be able to use that as an excuse with Jesus Christ. It's not going to fly with God. Jesus said, you will be hated. And Jesus also said Go to where? Better life church. So he's made your life better? It has. I've only been able to go a few times because I just found the church. The one on campus isn't the best. Um, but I've heard it. Sounds like you made a judgment about the campus church. Well, not so much the church as the people that I'm Honestly, I hope they find salvation, and I genuinely think, for salvation. I hope they find salvation, and I genuinely hope that they, in the ways they worship, they find God. Uh, so your judgment, they haven't found God yet. No, I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. I've been told that directly, and I don't know. It just wasn't a good fit. Personal. And so, the only judge, the only judgment I think I have to give. And you're right. I don't really have a place to judge. Right now. And that's something I'm trying to do. I am trying to abide by. Do not judge others, or you will be judged. I heard of a woman. I heard of a woman. Well, Jesus is saying in Matthew 7 that we shouldn't judge hypocritically, not that we shouldn't judge. He says, get, get the beam out so you might judge. Get the beam out. The standard you use in judgment is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a problem your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you, but you're not that speck in your eye when you can't see past the speck in your own? Why do you think they call it getting stoned? First, get rid of the log in your own. Right. So you're supposed to get rid of your own sin first. Otherwise, it's hypocritical judgment. So if I was a drunkard and now I'm telling the drunkard to repent, nothing wrong with that. You get one of these? No, I Why? It's all Bible verses. Because I feel like they'll probably be taken out of context. Well, you, you, your homework would be then to check each Bible verse, make sure it's in context. Because I assure you it is, or I'm a liar. Liars go to hell, so that violates my conscience. Are you a homosexual? Why are you defending it? Then? Is it natural? Yes, actually. It's not natural. That's it's gross. It's unnatural. There's actually a lot of cases in the animal world where. So are, you, are you saying that homosexuals act like animals? No, I'm saying people are animals. We're all creatures. No, we're, we're not all animals. No, God, God made the animals, and then he, he made us higher, a higher creature. He make us animals. We, we're made in God's image. We're made in God's image. God's not an animal either. Right? No, I don't think you do. If you don't agree with what I just said, you don't understand. Do you agree that God made us in, our, in his image? Okay, so did God make animals in his image? What? 
they were made out of his image. You're not answering the question, yes or no. Did, did God make animals in his image? Sexuality. Women lying with women, you don't think that's homosexual? You gotta read all the way to the end of the chapter. Oh, bling bling is like rings and 
necklaces and stuff. <coughs> Yes, he does. Okay, so you, you read First Timothy six nine to eleven. And I'm, I really appreciate you. I hadn't read the first one. Yeah. I suppose my question now is, do you believe God can still love me? He's already demonstrated love for them, young lady. He, he showed them a bloody love at the cross. And they're not responding properly to that. That's their problem, not God's problem. God already did his part. Well, the Bible says that uh, as in, in the latter days, as in the day of Noah, uh, they would mock and scoff at the preaching. So it doesn't surprise me we're, that we're in the latter days. And... They're mockers and scoffers, and Jesus said they would hate you for my name's sake, so that's all just fulfilling the Bible. I believe it. Jesus said you would be hated for my name's sake, so we preach Jesus and him crucified, holiness, and flee from sin, fear God, then people get all riled up. That's why they stick around for hours trying to justify themselves. That's what they're doing. They're justifying themselves. That's Yeah, well, I mean, it's obvious by what they're saying that that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to justify sin that they're actively living in. But it doesn't matter the way they view it because in Psalm, in their eyes, it doesn't change the truth, though. Their eyes don't change. They're blind. They're, they're willful, blind guides leading other people into hell. Well, I agree those things will all be judged for on Judgment Day. Thank you. 
Most of you are choosing the devil's advice. You're choosing the devil's wisdom. The devil says, get drunk, get high, get laid. And you say, yes, devil, yes, devil. Drink this, smoke this. Get drunk, get high, get laid. That's the devil's advice. And uh, that's bad advice. Jesus came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Here's the rule. Sin leads to misery. Yeah, it's not called the happy herpes. Um, it's not called the glorious gonorrhea. Sin leads to misery. Uh, how many of you girls have ever had a broken heart? Maybe some guy who came to you. triggered. Okay, another class break. Hopefully we'll get some more in the crowd. Ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's quite a bit of background noise going on now, so I'm going to go ahead and shut down the video, save battery for a while, and we'll be back. Uh, hit the live notifications if you want to you know when we go live again. Praise God. Saints, keep praying. God bless you. Thanks.